Soul Smith, the sequel to Unsold by Will Wick. I don't know why I enjoy saying that man's name this way so much, but I'm never going to stop. Unless he like personally asked me. I'd stop then, that's you know, I'm not gonna be rude. But just adding some context to this review, I read the first book in this series and thought it was fine. I would say it's labeled as probably around mid for me and didn't really get a lot of the hype. But after I think well over a year of people telling me no, it gets better, continue on, I've decided to peer on into this universe once again. And I have my fair share of criticisms, but I'm also definitely starting to get the appeal. Unsold, the first book to me, showed an author with a lot of passion for the craft, a really clear, good vision, just not necessarily necessarily the technical talent to deliver in a way that would resonate with me personally. And Soul Smith has already shown me that yes, Will Wick is improving in some pretty drastic ways while still maintaining quite a few of his flaws. Getting into the actual review here though, the major flaw that continues on over from the first book to me is an inability to connect with Lyndon in any substantial way. I have a hard time remembering a book that I've actually thought this positively of while simultaneously just absolutely feeling nothing towards the main character, Lyndon. Don't get me wrong, he actually falls into some tropes I quite enjoy. Hard Hardcore training, trying to overcome barriers put there by culture and society is all stuff that hooks me in. And in those moments, I often do find myself rooting for Lyndon, but instead of like a deep emotional profound connection, I often would develop with like a Robin Hobb character or an Abercrombie. This is just more of like rooting for a sports team almost because the people around me in the bar are rooting for the sports team. Hey man, I, I heard about your struggles, which you're trying to overcome. Super inspiring. I'm a big fan. I hope you, I hope you managed to get over. Oh, all that's stuff. that's so sweet of you to say. You, you want to like grab a drink later or something? You know, hang out, get you know, buddy, buddy. I, I didn't say I like you. No. No. And that is a cancerous issue. It substantially cuts down pretty much any enjoyment I'm going to have from this book, but. Funnily enough, other characters are starting to pull in my emotional investment without a doubt. Ethan immediately grabbed me as a reader and became my fan favorite for this book. Frustratingly, while well, Lyndon is kind of this just straight line, a tomato soup made with not enough spices, Will Wheat has surrounded him with a supporting cast of pro and antagonists that are far more interesting than him and seem to have more of a realized personality as well. And fortunately enough, the conflicts around the characters were often, well, albeit a bit messy, interesting and well-motivated enough to carry me through the story as a reader and largely soften the more negative experience of having Lyndon largely drive the ship. And I also forgot to add that this book is once again breakneck pace and just very short. Wilwick seems to be crafting this series around just having entries that just fill one plot line, get it done, move on to the next, and that's why he's been able to put out so many so quickly. And I actually think that's a really great way to write in the current era. It fills in that kind of just go, go, go mentality a lot of readers have while keeping the series mo moving at a pace that I think will satisfy those who are attracted to that style. So getting more into that narrative, there are ancient structures and artifacts motivating a lot of tribal warfare and you're getting more of a detailed look instead of just on the first culture that the first book obviously largely focused on and we're seeing the grander conflicts unveil themselves. And that's actually the book's greatest strength, really getting me to care about this world. And that's also why I think Will has so much passion in him as an author, because this is a quite different feeling world with a passion and energy in its execution that is quite contagious. There is something about his writing that while it is lacking in some of the finer nuances that really help assist the emotional connection with the reader, in terms of just feeling the energy off the page, I think Will Wick has an actual really strong gift. And there are a few more tropes here that I really like in terms of ancient ruin 
ruins, magical artifacts, and it's actually a really neat version of world building and blending where it's pulling from some tried and true tropes and staples for the fantasy genre, but I in no way, shape, or form would say they're being handled in a tired or out of date way. Got a haircut. In terms of tone, this book is very often compared to shonen anime and things along those lines, and I do agree with that assessment, but just to more accurately and concisely let you know what you're getting into, it is progression fantasy. There is a hardcore leveling up type approach to the magic systems and a few other elements here that will either be a massive turn on for certain people who really like that kind of handling or more like in my lane, it's just a style that's fine and there's nothing wrong with it. I haven't really found anyone who hates that approach to magic, but it's very strong here. And this is gonna take me to talking about the magic system in which the tribal kind of warfare that's happening is really used to explore quite thoroughly. And there's this stringent tier, well, if you've read the first book, this kind of stringent tiered system that Lyndon needs to make his way through. And I very much so like its development and handling. And all around, I find myself definitely motivated to move on into book three Whereas a lot of the best fantasy books and series have this almost wild roller coaster ride appeal because the main character is so flavorful and impactful, Soul Smith to me kind of more hit like one of those Disney rides where you're just going on a continued straight line of okay, that's fine, but everything around you is so interesting and cool. That's that's really what this series is hidden like for me. Fortunately, because I've actually paid attention to what apparently the development of the series is like, this main complaint for me apparently will be done away with. Some of the people I've heard be the harshest critics of Lyndon said later on they really do start enjoying him as a character, which I'm definitely open to. I've had other books where I found the protagonist kind of bland at first and then really fallen in love with him later on. Red Rising actually comes to mind. I wasn't actually that big a fan of the main character at first and then by later books I was like, I would die for him. I will join you immediately. One more criticism I have of this book though, and if I remember correctly, this is also prevalent in Unsold as well. There is just a feeling of things happen often to benefit main character and get them out of bad situation. While I do feel like our protagonists are very well motivated, there is just some conveniences and timing that it personally bugs the crap out of me. I know there are other people who are far better at just, you know, suspending narrative belief when it comes to convenient timing, but that's something I've always struggled with, and it seems Will Wick, as an author, has no issue uh, utilizing that, in my opinion, fault uh, far too often. So at the end of the day, this is going to be more of a middling review, though I do find myself quite captivated by the overarching story. And that has given me quite a bit of hope that especially with the third book, I will fall in love with this franchise. And so I am giving Soul Smith a six out of 10, but it is a very compelling six out of 10 above average. I mean, Lord knows my audience has wanted me to get through Cradle for quite some time, and uh, it's time for me to go ahead and do it. So let me know what you think of this book in the comments down below, just below that like button, hintity hint hint, and check out my books or merch if you'd like to support what I do here. I also have a Patreon, of course. Have a good one, y'all. Bye. And of course, I'd like to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreon, Esarde. Hope you're having a great one. Bye.